it's probably long overdue that I audit my wallet and see how well each of my nine credit cards stack up against each other. We'll take a look at my keeper cards, which ones will probably or already have been banished to the sock drawer forever, and which ones could be on the chopping block in the coming months. Before I go ahead and rank my cards from worst to best, I do want to give a shout out to fellow creator Sledge of Sledge Inc. Team for making the original video and then challenging his fellow creators to do the same. You should definitely check out his video he ranked all 18 of his travel cards. That is double the amount that I actually have overall. So definitely show his channel some love as well. So this ranking is probably going to have some hot takes and I imagine a lot of you will disagree with where I put these cards, but at the end of the day, these are all good cards because obviously I only get good cards, kind of. Anyway, this is also a soft launch of my hybrid credit card setup that I've been trying to build out over the last few months. I wanted to take the time to make this video, but stay on the lookout for future episodes of my hybrid credit card series. With that out of the way, here are my credit cards ranked from worst at number 9 to best at number 1. Coming in at number 9 is my American Express Blue Business Plus. The card has no annual fee, but unfortunately I also did not receive a sign up bonus for this card. The Blue Business Plus was my first ever business credit card that I got a couple months ago, and it was a really great introduction to the world of business credit. Amex was able to approve me right away with a credit limit of $10,000. I don't typically use the card very often anymore. It does earn two times membership rewards points on everything, but I use a different card as my catch-all credit card in my hybrid setup. The card was useful because it had a 0% APR offer. I was able to responsibly leverage that to upgrade some equipment for the channel, and I've since paid that off. But it was nice to have, and I had a plan going into it. The only reason I put this card at number nine on the list is because A, I did have to forego the sign-up bonus that was targeted to me, and of course, it's not my primary catch-all card, and it sees very limited use. But that's only because I'm a team hybrid person, and if you're on team travel, then of course this is a great catch-all card. At number eight, I have the Chase Freedom Flex, and I wish I could show you the entire card, but it's embossed on the front with the numbers, which was not part of the ranking, but it's definitely something that I wish was removed by Chase. I added the no annual fee Freedom Flex for two reasons. First, it is one third of that very coveted Chase Trifecta, and this was back when I was still getting into the game, and Chase Trifecta was like all the rage. I know it's not the best, but I don't regret getting the card. And then I also got it because it comes with a very easy to earn 20,000 point sign up bonus. The Freedom Flex's claim to fame is its rotating quarterly categories. I find that those can be pretty hit or miss for me, but I can see how it can be really popular for a lot of people. I do also make use of the $10 quarterly Instacart credit that we'll have through July of next year. And then I also do use the $10 a month GoPuff credits because I live pretty close to one of their like distribution centers. So it's easy to save on the fees. But unfortunately that is being axed by Chase at the end of this year, unless they do extend it again, which I'm not sure if they're gonna do that. Overall, the Freedom Flex is a fine card. It is ranked at number eight on my list just because A, it is a sock drawer card for at least six months out of the year. I would use it for groceries during one quarter or potentially for PayPal or Amazon in another quarter. But outside of that, with my personal situation, not having gas as an expense, for example, it is less effective than it probably could be. Rounding out the seller of my credit cards would be my Bank of America, customized cash rewards credit cards. These cards have no annual fee, and the original one, I was able to get a $200 sign up bonus, and this was actually my first ever credit card. The second customized cash rewards card was originally an Alaska Airlines Visa, also with Bank of America. I think I earned a 40,000 mile sign up bonus with that, but I did stop flying Alaska Airlines late last year, so it didn't make sense to hold on to a annual fee card with an airline that I didn't really fly. I found out that I was able to product change it to another Bank of America card, so I figured why not just get a second customized cash rewards card. I use these cards for 3% cash back on online shopping. I actually get 3.75% back because I'm a 
gold tier member of Bank of America's preferred rewards, but I did just switch banks, so I think that I'm going to pretty soon here drop off and go back down to the normal 3%. I don't really have a use for any of the other categories that Bank of America offers on this card for 3% cash back, gas, home improvement, dining is another one, but I have other cards that serve for dining and I don't have gas expenses and don't own a home yet. So they're both set to 3% on online shopping and I put some subscriptions on there that do code as online shopping. This also helps me keep the cards open and in good standing because I'm still using them on a monthly basis. I'm holding on to them just because I know in the future I might end up being more skewed towards cash back and I want to be able to have the flexibility to get at least 3% on multiple categories, if not more. At number five on my credit card rankings is my Chase Freedom Unlimited. I got this card because I was trying to complete my Chase Trifecta back in April, and there was, of course, also that 20,000 point sign up bonus. This is my catch all credit card at 1.5% back on everything, which is obviously not the best. Of course, there are some better options out there that I want to shout out, like the Fidelity Visa, Active Cash, or the SoFi credit card. Also like the Freedom Flex, I do end up using the quarterly Instacart credits as well as the monthly GoPuff credits and I'm able to get some decent value there. The only reason I'm putting the card this high on the list is because I do end up using it a little bit more than I'd like honestly, but it does fit as my catch all card at least right now, but obviously it's not earning me a lot of rewards. The number 4 card on this list is the first with an annual fee. The $95 MX Blue Cash Preferred is probably a card that I use the most. It gets used at least once a week because it earns 6% cash back on all of my groceries spent. Groceries are definitely my biggest expense every month because of course I don't have a gas expense and I do end up getting a lot of value from this card. Though I will note that this card is really only valuable if you're spending a lot of money on groceries every month but it does have a cap of $6,000. I was able to receive a sign up bonus of $250. While it's not a lot, it was nice to have in the beginning. This year's been pretty light on sign up bonuses for me, so I have been able to get a lot of usage from this card. As much as I love this card and use it all the time, it is still a downgrade candidate just because of that spending cap and the annual fee, obviously. Taking the bronze medal on my credit card rankings is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. The Sapphire Preferred is somewhat overrated, I will give you that. But for an annual fee of $95, it's been a nice introduction to the world of points and miles and figuring out how to transfer my points out to Chase's transfer partners and getting better redemptions than I would if I just used like airline miles or booked through a travel portal. I've gotten enough value to justify the fee in the first year at least, and my account anniversary is actually coming up later this month. So if I'm unable to burn through all of my chase points between now and then, I will use the card for another year and then potentially downgrade to another freedom card after year two. I've used my chase points for Southwest flights and a Hyatt stay so far, and I've gotten some decent value from them. I know it's not the most glamorous, but it's been able to save me a lot of money and it's how I've been able to take some trips while still saving up for a bigger international trip next year. I must admit though that I have not used the $50 hotel credit that you get if you book a stay through Chase's travel portal. I, I know I'm terrible. I didn't use it in the first year. Hopefully I can try to use it in the second year. Otherwise, that'll be another reason for me to downgrade the Sapphire Preferred. The only reason this card is ranked below the other two cards on this list that I still haven't talked about is because the card does not see a ton of my spend every day. The multipliers kind of trash. I guess there's like three times on dining, so it's my dining card, but that is easily matched or beaten by other cards. The Sapphire Preferred also has some nice travel benefits, so I do make sure to book at least some of my trips using the card so that I can get access to things like trip cancellation or interruption insurance. Though in a minute, you'll see why this is kind of obsolete because I have another card that does the same thing. Taking my credit card setup by storm and stealing the silver medal is the Amex Hilton Honors Business Credit Card. 
I actually got this card a little over a week ago, and I've been loving it so far. You get Hilton Gold status, and importantly for me, you get 10 free visits to Priority Pass lounges just by holding the card. I don't have a premium travel credit card, so it's a nice stopgap measure, I would say, before I'm able to go up and get a premium card once I start to travel more. So I'm happy to pay $95, at least in the first year, and I will get a sign-up bonus of 130,000 Hilton points and hopefully get some really nice value there as well. There is also the ability to get a free night with the card with $15,000 in annual spend, but as you might have seen in previous videos, that's not something that I'm particularly thrilled about doing, and I would much rather put that money towards different sign-up bonuses or just optimizing my spend for cash back. This is a common theme that I've started to see and present in my hybrid credit card series. Even so, I still consider this card a keeper card, at least for now, before I go and get a premium travel credit card. And finally, at number one, we have the built MasterCard. For a no annual fee card, this card is loaded. There are so many different perks that come with the card, and in my opinion, it rivals the Chase Sapphire Preferred in terms of travel benefits and protections. But obviously, the best part about the card is the ability to pay my fairly outrageous rent with it and earn points on that spend. I also get to earn points on my utilities and internet bill because all three of those are billed directly through my built app because I live at a built affiliated property. I don't think they would allow that at a built affiliated property if it was against the rules, so I'm comfortable sharing that on camera with you all here. The card has mostly the same travel benefits as the Sapphire Preferred, and that really solidifies its position at number one on the list because it has no annual fee. Well folks, that wraps up the audit of my wallet for this fall. I hope you were able to get some entertainment out of this video and discover some cool cards that you might not already have, or more likely that you do have and also like as well. What do you think about my rankings of these cards? Should some of them have been higher or lower? I'd love to know, so please let me know in the comments below. I appreciate each and every one of you as we continue to build out a community together on this channel. Once again, thanks to Sledge for making this challenge for us, and be sure to go check out his video after this. I've been Josh, take care, and I'll see you next time.